Power Rangers. You know them, and maybe you already love them. These teams of morphing, color-coordinated, spandex-clad heroes have been fighting against various forces of evil for almost 30 years now. Power Rangers is a pretty weird series, and a lot of its eccentricities come from its unconventional production. Power Rangers licenses and dubs over footage of suit action from the Japanese Super Sentai series, and combines it with new original footage to create an entirely new show. Power Rangers' identity is generally pretty far removed from the original Sentai as a result. However, there is a season of Power Rangers that manages to both adapt its Sentai source material pretty darn faithfully, while maintaining its identity as a part of the Power Rangers series, all while being one of the most compelling stories in a Rangers series to this day. I mean, you clicked on the video, you know what we're here to talk about, it's Power Rangers Time Force, and also, the original Sentai that it is based on, Mirai Sentai Time Ranger. We're going to be going backwards through time, starting with Time Force, and then going back to look at Time Ranger. I grew up with Time Force, and it was my introduction to the world of Tokusatsu, so I definitely have quite a bit of personal nostalgia for it. But trust me, I'll try to keep the rose-tinted glasses off. Time Force is the ninth season of the larger Power Rangers series, and it follows four Time Force officers from the year 3000 that have chased down the leader of a criminal mutant organization, Rancic, to the year 2001 after their commanding officer, Alex, was defeated. They team up with the ancestor of Alex, Wes, and become the Time Force Power Rangers. Jen is the Pink Ranger. She's a no-nonsense leader that has trouble connecting with others at first, Wes in particular, seeing him as a spoiled brat who sees being a ranger as a game. She was engaged to Alex before he seemingly died, and the fact that Wes looks just like him only complicates her feelings. However, they come to become good friends over the course of the show, and even start to develop some romantic tension. Wes, as the new Red Ranger, is a bit overconfident, but is a capable fighter. He was born to a rich family, and his father, Mr. Collins, tries to raise Wes in his own image. Wes wants nothing to do with his father's business though, and instead chooses to carve his own path. Wes's journey from spoiled rich boy to determined hero is one of the best parts of the show. His complicated relationship with his father gives Wes a lot to work with as a character, and Mr. Collins even has his own arc, all tying into the main theme of the show, that destiny can be changed for the better. The rest of the rangers are a bit less involved, but the whole cast has great chemistry that's really infectious, and they play their parts in the Monster of the Week episodes and within the bigger story. The Blue Ranger Lucas is a very early 2000s cool dude that has skills behind a wheel but is a bit vain, caring a lot about outward appearances. Yellow is Katie. She's easygoing and friendly, but is quick to jump into action when it comes down to a fight. Her superhuman strength gives her the means to handle things. The Green Ranger Trip is the youngest and naivest of the group. He's also an alien, notice the green hair, that at times receives visions from people's thoughts. He is also a skilled technician, developing many of the Time Force Rangers' weapons. Later in the series, Wes's father creates the Silver Guardians, a private security force that protects paying clients from the mutant attacks. The Silver Guardians' 21st century technology is initially inadequate to deal with the mutants, until one of the Guardian soldiers and former classmate of Wes, Eric, gets his hands on the Quantum Morpher becoming the Quantum Ranger. As the Quantum Ranger, Eric does assist the Time Force Rangers from time to time, but he only follows his own rules, doing whatever it takes to rise up the ranks of the Guardians. He believed he was the polar opposite of Wes, having been born to a poor family and struggling throughout his youth. But in the end, he comes to understand that they both fought to change their destinies, and even takes a hit protecting Wes during the final battle. Because you're young, it doesn't mean you can't help America. Despite the fact that time is literally in the title, time travel doesn't really happen that much in Time Force. Aside from the initial setup and the finale, Time Force has only two instances of actual time travel. 
one where Wes and Eric go back to prehistoric times to get the Quantasaurus Rex, and one where Katie gets mystically whisked away to colonial times. There's also a couple of episodes that have theming based on other eras of time, but don't actually involve time travel. There's the episode where Wes gets his battleizer from a medieval knight, and the movie Madness 2-parter, where the rangers get trapped within different genres of film. The villains in Time Force are some absolute standouts. The main villain, Rancic, is an absolute joy to watch. He's hammy, but not too cartoonish, and he remains threatening throughout. He's extremely metal for a ranger's design too, pulling weapons out of his own bones. Hell yeah. His backstory touches on some interesting points for a ranger series too. Rancic was a mutant born in an era where DNA science allowed for genetically perfect designer babies. He was subject to prejudice and grew spiteful, becoming focused entirely on revenge against the humans. Rancic's all-consuming rage led him to betray one of the few humans that decided to help him, resulting in the birth of the evil robotic Frax, who is another great villain. His role in Rancic's past and his final speech really make the redemption arc in the finale work. Like, actually listen to this. Rancic's daughter Nadira is another fun villain. She gets a hilarious romantic comedy episode with Lucas and has a big role to play in the final villain redemption arc. The Time Force finale is a roller coaster and an exciting and emotional one at that. With Wes and Eric facing off against Rancic's forces alone, the choice of the other Time Force rangers to take a chance on changing the future, the end of the love triangle between Jen, Alex, and Wes, and the aforementioned villain redemption arc. It's a rare case in Power Rangers where the villains are not redeemed through being cured of mind control or other magical means, but through a true change of heart. It's certainly not presented subtly, and perhaps a little rushed, but for the limitations that Power Rangers has, it's pretty great stuff. The Time Force villains also get some bonus screen time in the crossover with the following series, Wild Force. Rancic and Nadira get to do heroics alongside both of the two Power Rangers teams. The Time Force Rangers themselves have an excellent victory lap in that crossover as well, with Eric and Wes working together leading the reformed Silver Guardians, and a loving reunion with the folks from the future. So what makes Time Force the best? For one, the acting is a step above most Power Rangers series. In the original Mighty Morphin, actors were picked based on their stunt and martial arts abilities, but things were different for Time Force. There's more focus on the actual character acting in the season. They even got some properly experienced actors, like Vernon Wells as Rancic and Edward Albert as Mr. Collins. A bunch of the actors went on to continue their work in film, TV, and video games. Most notably, Daniel Southworth, who played Eric, is the voice and motion capture actor for Virgil in the Devil May Cry series. The action in Time Force is also top-notch with some properly impressive stunt work and special effects for a Power Rangers season. Much of the plotting and scene direction is adapted directly from the original Sentai Time Ranger, but there was also a surprising amount of original fight footage created for Time Force. An interesting thing to look for in Power Rangers series of this era is the visual differences between the Sentai footage and the Power Rangers footage. The video quality and the color grading is different between the Sentai and Power Rangers footage for a lot of the shows in this era. In Time Force in particular, you can see the difference in the suits. The Time Ranger suits have a bit more of a glossy sheen to them compared to the Time Force suits. Also of note, because Time Ranger came out in 2000, just a year after the original Matrix film was released, there are a couple scenes that are pretty clearly emulating the famous bullet time scene from that film. Another big boon to Time Force is its story. The main theme of fighting to change destiny is powerful, and all the drama that comes along the way is great. However, most of the credit for that does go to the original source material, Mirai Sentai Time Ranger. Time Force directly adapts much of the plot from Time Ranger. The four officers from the future meeting the 21st century man who completes the team, the father-son drama, the red and pink romance, and the red and sixth ranger rivalry. Time Force draws from some of the best of Time Ranger, but it also does a lot differently aside from just toy-based changes, like the new bikes and the power-up battleizers. 
Obviously, the cast is new for Time Force, and even though they occupy similar roles, they are quite different as characters to the original Time Rangers. Time Red is Tatsuya. Like Wes, he was the son of a wealthy businessman who he shares a strained relationship with. However, with Tatsuya, his other family members were not absent in Time Ranger. Tatsuya's mother and grandfather, who taught him martial arts, both play a role in his background. Tatsuya's will to carve his own path rather than be defined by his father's wishes remained very much intact with Wes, and the adaptations of the episodes involving their family drama are pulled pretty directly from Time Ranger. The original Quantum Ranger Time Fire is Naoto. His rivalry and relationship with Tatsuya were also adapted extremely faithfully with Wes and Eric. Naoto also came from a poor upbringing and met his red at school. His introductory arc is practically pulled straight from Time Ranger, shot for shot, broken helmet reveal and all. He works sometimes with and sometimes against the Time Rangers just like Eric, and plays by his own rules. I also have to note the Time Fire theme, Shinku no Doshi, cause holy shit, just listen to this. The biggest difference between Eric and Naoto is that Naoto does not survive the final battle, being unable to escape from the cruel fate that was put upon him. Time Pink is Yuri. Like Jen, she's the leader of the team and is an initially cold-seeming woman that slowly fosters a relationship with the Red Ranger. She also has a tragic backstory involving the death of a loved one like Jen. Yuri's family was killed by an alien criminal when she was young, leading her to a life dedicated to stopping crime. Where Jen had Alex, Yuri spent most of her life without anyone. She only began to develop connections after becoming stranded in the past, particularly with Tatsuya, although begrudgingly. Time Green is Shion. Like Trip, he's a green-haired alien skilled with technology that is a bit naive. What didn't make it into Time Force was the fact that Sion's home planet was destroyed, leaving him as the sole survivor of his race. Time Blue is Ayase. Like Lucas, he was a former racer, but unlike Lucas, he has a secret an incurable disease that threatens to take his life in the very near future. He struggles with this illness throughout the series, a struggle known only to him and Tatsuya, until a breaking point at the very end. Time Yellow is Domon. He's still the muscle of the group like Katie, and he was a former professional fighter. He's easy to anger and is a bit of a womanizer, but he ends up involved in a serious romance with a recurring character Honami, a reporter and photographer that develops a crush on Time Yellow, who she mistakenly believes to be Ayase. There is a reporter character in Time Force, but he only appears for one episode. If there was one thing from Time Ranger that I wish they had brought into Time Force, it's the depths of the relationships and stories that were explored with Yellow and Blue. While I do enjoy what we did get of Katie and Lucas in Time Force, I do think they could have had more significant roles like those of Ayase and Domon, and what that brought to the interpersonal relationships between all of the rangers. Ayase's arc towards the end of Time Ranger, where his illness almost leads him to leave the team, is extremely compelling, and really solidifies the ties between the whole team, as well as reinforcing the major theme of changing destiny. The biggest differences come on the villain side though. The villains in Time Ranger were originally aliens, and were themed around money and mafia crime families. Time Ranger's primary villain was Don Del Nero, the head of the Launders family, and they did him dirty in Time Force. His suit is used for Gluto, and instead of a powerful and intelligent mob boss, Gluto is really just a punching bag for Nadira. I imagine the American kids networks didn't want to put some actual mafia theming into the show though so it's probably a necessary loss. Getting Rancic in exchange isn't a horrible trade though. Rancic actually gets a bit more backstory than the Don does. Don Del Nero had some hints towards tragedy in his life, but they're not explored a whole lot, and at the end of the day, all Del Nero cares about is money. Nadira's original counterpart, Lila, is even more money obsessed. She basically just dips during the finale since Del Nero isn't around to give her money anymore. Frax's original counterpart Guillen had a similarly tragic backstory to Frax, 
Yin was originally a poor, bullied boy that couldn't count to four. He naively saved Delnero from a rival crime family and was nearly killed for refusing to give them Delnero's whereabouts. Delnero saved Guillen by putting his brain into a robotic body, but slowly the robotics began to drive Guillen to madness, which eventually led to his final rampage. The Don did care for Guillen and tried his best to keep him from losing his sanity, but in the end, Delnero dies, unable to stop him. There's also the case of the true villain behind it all in Time Ranger, Captain Luya, who was adapted into Alex in Time Force. Time Ranger's entire plot was instigated by Ryuya to prevent his own death. Several years prior to the year 3000, an experiment led him to see two possible futures. One where the year 3000 is destroyed by the G-Zord, and one where he dies fighting as Time Fire. To prevent both possibilities, he went back in time to become Time Red, briefly against the G-Zord and hid the Time Fire Brace in 2000 to allow someone else to die in his place, which would be Naoto. Ryuya, like Alex, attempts to convince the other Time Rangers to return to 3000 and tries to wipe their memories when Red sends them back. But Ryuya does this to prevent any possible information about his plot from leaking, and ultimately he is killed during a confrontation with ISA during the Time Rangers' escape. The Ryuya plot twist is a huge thing that was removed from Time Force, and while I definitely understand its exclusion given how dark it was, I think what it adds to the message of fighting against another's chosen destiny is very powerful. If you ask me to pick which series I think was better between Time Force and Time Ranger, my answer would probably change depending on my mood. On one hand, Time Force has the more developed villains, some improved action, and it is a tighter show with less filler, but Time Ranger has the arcs for blue and yellow, as well as the Ryuya plot twist that recontextualize the events of the series. In conclusion, while Time Ranger and Time Force cover a lot of the same ground, they do it in surprisingly different ways that both have their own merits. I'd highly recommend you check out both of the series if you haven't already. At least if you live in the US, Time Force is fully available for free on the official Power Rangers YouTube channel, and Time Ranger is free to watch from Shout Factory. I'd also recommend you check out some of my other videos about more togisatsu and also anime, and if you're really generous, support me on Patreon. It would really help.